the main pump down there, pumps the water up, and it tees off here, tees off into these two grow beds, this first one here, and also the second one there you saw, the two grow beds, which this one fills and drains into this tank here, which is connected to the main tank. And this one fills and drains through here, back into the main fish tank here. So as it as it tees off, it split goes around that way, and heads around here, out through this dodgy pipework, into a filter here. So this is the bio filter. I have and I have always covered up. Uh, yeah, so this one is filled with bits of chopped up ag pipe and some sponge scourer, scourer sponging cloth. Um, so the water feeds in, just slowly filters its way, fills up to the top. And then as it gets to the top, it drains off through this pipework, which runs down along here. Can drain back into here. We don't have that running at the moment. And it just pretty much comes along here, through here through these grow pipes here, a bit of flow, and comes along, we haven't, haven't got much growing here at the moment, this parsley seems to be going pretty good, Let's get some plenty of good root action there. Growing well in the NFT. This one's not so well. And then it comes through here, down the pipe, on the ground, back up through here, and drains back into the fish tank. This is one of the grow beds we've got going at the moment. You see these uh, zucchini plants. These two here starting to flower. Driving. Going really well. And along here we have some strawberries. We have a few possums around here. And uh, we didn't give them these strawberries a bit of a hammering, but I think the possum's moved into our roof now. Do it every night, so it <laughs> tends to leave these alone. And under here, you just see we've got an aloe vera plant. Growing really well, and the aquaponics getting a bit covered up here from all this. A bit of breathing and growing space. Oh dear. Fahrenheit. The H. Yeah. Okay, 
now the ammonia this one here we want absolutely nothing so we have pretty much nothing nothing to trace there so that's really good so all the good microbes converting the ammonia down breaking it down uh, doing a great job not leaving any behind and then we want the nitrite level to be yeah, zero and that's exactly what it is so that's working well as well and this one is always pretty high the nitrate around the 40 to 80 it doesn't really hurt the fish too much just makes good fertilizer for the plants back up. So I've just got this bag of hydrated lime. Just got it from Bunnings. And we're just going to add a couple, so five mil or a couple of tablespoons. One. Simply get water, swish it around, half into there, That'll last, that'll be good for another week or so. We'll check it in a week and change, adjust pH as requ required. Okay, these are freshwater dew or eel tail catfish. Uh, the technical name is Tandanus tandanus, uh, which I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, yeah, so they were caught in the local river, uh, brought them back, and they went well on the aquaponics. And they, I kept them in here a couple of months, and then just fished them out and, and cooked them up and ate them. They were, they were quite good to eat. And they don't grow much bigger than this anyway, so they're about fully grown. And they actually brought a few things with them, which I didn't realise at the time. So for those of you that don't know about the reproductive cycle of freshwater mussels, I'll leave a link in the description below to give you more info on that. Uh, but basically, freshwater mussels depend on fish for their life cycle. Uh, so when a female mussel has had its eggs fertilised by a male mussel, uh, the larvae starts to grow inside the female, and once this larvae reaches a parasitic stage, then the female actually shoots out or injects uh, the larvae into the gills of a nearby fish and this larvae in the parasitic stage um, it attaches to the gills of the fish and sucks on the, the blood and grows and develops from there and after a period of time when the larvae have developed and formed into tiny little mussels themselves then they just drop off from the gills and fall to the bottom of the creek or river where they come from so after a little while of cleaning out the tank as I do, I notice some of these mussel shells that just seem to appear out of nowhere in the bottom of the tank. Um, yeah, and it was just amazing. They're all just really, really tiny. Um, this one's a bit of a funny shape, one, like a cone shell type, type arrangement. Um, most of them just being the, the normal mussel clam style. Um, yeah, so I never, I've never found an alive one, or, and they've never grown any bigger than about this size here. So whether or not, um, whether the fish have been eating them, or, or if they can't survive in the water conditions, or, or whatnot, I'm not too sure. But there you go, freshwater mussels brought in from wild caught fish.
Okay, so red claw crayfish are mostly active at night. Uh, so I thought I'd give you a bit of an update and try and show you uh, and some of them feeding, if I could. So apologies for the bit of the dodgy camera work, but there's one of them there, just crawling around and, and having a feed. Uh, at the moment, these guys are feeding on tomato plant leaves. So there's a bit of information on the internet regarding tomato plants being possibly toxic, um, being part of the nightshade family, but I can certainly vouch firsthand that um, certainly for red claw crayfish, I've had no real effects with them. Um, they've been able to eat these plants no problems at all uh, and grow pretty well from them. So yeah, they devour about this amount of food in about a week, no problems at all. Uh, and this is a bit of a bit of footage of the large female here. Um, yeah, it was pretty interesting her behaviour at night. Um, she does devour her food in about the time, same time frame, about uh, a week or so. And um, but yeah, when I was filming this on the particular model, she was trying to do is escape. So um, yeah, maybe I'm thinking about maybe modifying uh, the the enclosures a bit. Maybe giving her a bit of extra room. Maybe putting an, uh, an extra level on top or something or other for her to crawl around in and um, see how that goes. But yeah, if you guys have any comments or suggestions about that, uh, drop them in the comments section below. Cheers.